Hello and welcome to Crazy Owls Ship Emporium. Yes, you are at the Imperanas, and today we have a deal for you. The Carrot Buyer's Guide by a special request. And today I am joined by my sidekick and our hairy friend, Sidekick. Sidekick. Fat Man and Ribbon. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Um, yeah, so um, we also want to talk about if you uh, like these type of videos, don't forget to subscribe. Um, if you really want to support us, support us on Patreon, all that usual stuff. We just like to get it away at the start. Um, also want to don't forget a... to hit the bell. I also Aww. want to give a shout out to uh, Sandig for helping me and Algrid earlier today with this episode. He was just great with some information and brainstorming. So hats off to Sandig. Sandig. Right. Well done. Um, let's kick this off then. So um, the Carrick, um, probably the most popular ship in this game at the at this point. Um, I'm going to set off by saying with these buyers guides, some of these buyers guides have been a little bit hard for me to do because we are talking mm. about mainly you're talking about how the ships laid out and the aesthetics um because we don't have the gameplay for these ships yet um yeah. and and you're talking about promised features and stuff like that and um while they're promised we also now know that some of the ships and the example that i'll give is the uh, starfarer some of the promised features are being removed uh like quantum fuel and um so i'm finding yeah. these a little bit harder to do i don't know about yourself algrid um are you finding that as well yeah, and, and it's one of the problems we have is that at the moment, if you're looking at the ship, what can the ship do? It can cargo run. It can it can take on combat missions, but it's not really a combat ship. And yeah. so if we're doing a buyer's guide on what we've got at the moment, it's got nothing. Well, let, well let's start uh, there then. Let's start with the stats. So um, one of the things I did um, when I was up talking to you earlier was I mentioned that I think this ship's a little undergunned, but it's deliberately done mm. so can uh, just go over the stats for us uh, tell us the guns what we've got on this ship yeah, and... well on the ship we've got three man turrets as, as we are uh, we had confirmed um top two of those sides are, yeah uh we've got the starboard and port man turrets and they've both got rhino repeaters on them uh the ventral turret is also a man turret that's got uh m6a uh laser cannons and the top turret is a remote turret with two m6a uh, laser cannons as well mm. personally i always ditch for laser cannons and put repeaters on i know cannons have a bigger punch but i always find i seem to get more hits per per second from more shots yeah from sense. more shots landing so i prefer the laser repeaters i know other people would prefer the cannons so uh they're all size fours so you can swap those out to your heart's content mm. Um, and do you want to quickly go over some of the other components that you think that are worth mentioning? Well, <clears throat> comparing the components to the uh, to the matrix, the matrix uses the terminology of large. And uh, one of the things we did as we were going through this with Sandy is we actually worked out that basically on the matrix, large components are size three, if you didn't know that. Um, so the ship comes with a size three quantum, quantum drive. It comes stock with the Agni... Uh, quantum drive it comes with um the size three power plant the reliant it comes with two size three sorry i keep having to look at my notes yeah it's two size three coolers uh the ice flush um it also has um two size three shields the barbican so they're the mm. stock items on the ship and by spending in-game money you can actually upgrade those and so that gives quite a bit of upgrade path that you can take we do know the ship is supposed to have armor. We also know that from the Matrix, it's got two large uh, fuel intakes, two large fuel tanks, and two large quantum tanks, mm. as well as three medium-sized computers. Um, and that... Sorry, go on. No, 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 I'm just listen. Go ahead. Uh, and for me, that raised the question, is would one large computer be better than three mediums? And I'm not sure. I think the three mediums does give redundancy and possibly the ability to have three operations going at the same time. But then I also imagine three medium computers are... Maybe it's a little bit... Um, maybe, so it's a little, maybe it's a little bit like current CPUs where it's a single yeah. core processor versus a multi um, yeah. core processor operator. So it's probably stronger having one than having three separate. We'll yeah. have to wait and, and see. So, but then in terms of redundancy... 
you blow up your large, then you're up a creek. Yeah. You blow up one medium, you've still got two you can function with. I was so, thinking there was quite a bit of redundancy in what the, some of the other components you mentioned, like the dual fuel tanks and stuff like that. So yeah, mm -hmm. it does have a fair bit of redundancy. Um, well, it is also a large. It also is a long range ship, not long range as in the range, but its guns, but long range in terms of the distance travel. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit of a sore point from some other reviews. I've just oh, seen come back. Yeah. Yes, yes, very much so. Um, I, I kind of want to go over some of the real features of this ship. And um, for me, like, I've just got five rooms I've written down here. Um, like, mm. like every ship's got an engine bay as an example. So the ones for me that stand out are the med bay, the repair room, the drone room, the cartography room. And the uh, one that we'll probably have to talk a little bit about is the modular cargo bay and other modules uh, that mm. were promised. Now, that may change in the future. Um, but, you know, th this this ship shares a little bit of similarity with the Carrick in that way. Um, and, and I think well, that, it is the oh, sorry. with a caterpillar, <laughs> it's one of those times you can tell it's late at night when we do this, can't you? Um, yeah, the, the caterpillar. So, yeah, but, um, yeah, I think the med bay, uh, you don't see that on too many ships. I think like, like you, no. you, you do on ships that are larger than this, but this is probably the smallest ship other than a dedicated one, like the Apollo. And I think the caterpillar might have a module as well. It can be slipped in, um, <clears throat> but yeah you don't see many ships around this size they yeah and small. and you even look at some of the larger ships and even the, even the uh the kraken was doesn't have currently have a rep med bay and mm -hmm. they said well think about adding the basic uh features of a med bay yeah. so so you'll probably get something this... like the cutlass red bed in a kraken or something yeah <laughs> yeah uh whereas this has the as i understand it the top tier uh med bay so it's yep. the one that could do you know the best stuff uh, even the 890 jump, I believe, has only got a tier two. So I could be wrong on that, mm. but I believe it. It had the middle tier one, whereas the, I think you can the, say though sorry. safely though, a ship like this that's kind of out and about and then on the extremes would need that because if you don't have it, the person could be dead. Where um, with oh, yeah. the Orion uh, 890 jump, they've only really got to stabilize them to get them to hospital, so it's not quite as yeah. dire. Whereas, whereas for this ship being being one that is meant to be out on the fringes of of known space it is supposed to be exploring and doing all that type of stuff it really does need that top tier uh, med bay and that comes into the repair bay as well so i think um yeah with the repair bay and basically all these rooms it kind of shows that this ship and i think that's why it was kind of so popular initially is that um this ship has almost everything but it kind of mm. needs it because it's out on its own. And I think that's also shown by why it has the lack of guns. Um, and really that's how they've been able to balance the ship by giving a little bit of everything, but making it so when it's around other ships, that's when it's really in danger. You know, you yeah. don't, you don't want to be around other people. This is the, this is the, the isolation of ship for the uh, human railway situation. Let's just put it that way. That's right. Um, it, it's got the physical distancing down pat. Yeah. Yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the repair bay, obviously, I, I was kind of a bit surprised, well, not repair bay, repair room. I was surprised by how small it is, um, mm. but in our discussions of this, you kind of reminded me a lot of stuff can be repaired in place, and it can also be repaired with drones, so maybe you don't need as big a room. Um, and mm. the drone room is kind of interesting, you now I mentioned that too, because it's got a real, that really weird layout on the floor, doesn't it? Um, uh, Sandy was, when he was he doing the check for us, because uh, mm. I couldn't actually get in game, my game's not wanting to work for me at the moment really frustrating i'm on holidays and i couldn't get in yeah um but he was saying that it looks like it's got room for two on the sides in the bays ready to launch and two in the hangars so yep. it's like you can take up to four uh four drones uh which is pretty good and, that's uh and, and that, that also thing. means you could have four different drones couldn't it mm. so you, you could... could but i i imagine for for the for the carrot you'd be you, in most situations you'd be using it as, as more um repair I, I think you'd be looking at mines or things like that, but generally, I'd be thinking more like an like just a scouting drone and a repair drone. So probably two of each is what I'd be expecting, something of that nature, because it is an exploration ship, and you may mm. want to. Um, if you if they end up making it so drones can go through wormholes, like, do you know what I mean? Like that. There's your you know. Um, Launch the probe. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> send out the probe. But yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm. Um, I often wonder when I kind of go through this ship too, like um, this ship has a lot of improvements in it. Mm. So my first thought was maybe this is the maturing of the ship pipeline, 
But my other thought is, is it really just that they worked on this ship so hard because it is so popular? And I tend to lean towards more that than than the uh, earlier statement. Well, I think it's a bit of both. Like, we know that they changed the turrets based on the feedback they got from Citizen Con and from uh, Epicardi feeds as well. And they really just made them more uh, Hammerhead style, which goes back to what we were saying in, our, in the, one of our episodes on the Hammerhead earlier on, when we, we talked about the turrets and and that ship was really turret um, testing. Yes. And I and I think as it's gone on, we've, we're seeing that be implemented more and more on ships. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that that turret system appear on every ship with turrets down the track, yeah. even, even we, the Constellation and the Retaliator. We actually mentioned that, like I, I, I remember before I even started doing this show with you guys, I actually said they need to all be like that. Mm. And I've been saying that for five or six years, but I know as I've talked to you guys, you guys have come up to the same thought process. So, yeah, I well I, certainly, certainly when the hammerhead came out, that was one of the things all of us were. That was a conclusion crazy. we all came with the hammerhead. This is mm. this is a ship that's going to make or break turrets, yeah. and it was a test bed for them. And I think it shows that it, the fruits of that are really coming through. And, and the fact that they applied them into the carrack, I think, really does fix that as show that as well so specifically on turrets that come out the side of the ship like i think the same thing for this may and i'm hoping and as we talked about it um just to give you another extreme example would be the um and the name's going to elude my head um the drake ship that's like the constellation corsair that's it like yep. the corsair where they come out the side i think that ship is going to need the same treatment mm. um but um getting back to this ship um the layout of this ship is drastically improved um, it, uh, it, uh, I think one of the, you, you kind of said it best, so I'll let you say it. Well, we both kind yeah. of said this saying, but I'll let you say it. So get you ahead and say it. Cause, uh, she's, she's a mature lady now. She's fat. Yeah. So what, what is implying? She's no, that... she's no longer that long, sleek, uh, 20 year old model. She's the 30 year old or 40 year old. Yeah. Now she's just a 40 year old woman who's become a little fatter on the side, but. <laughs> So what Aragorn means by that is uh, when they kind of shrunk her back down and removed all the corridors, she, she got a li little bit chunkier, uh, but she's definitely a lot better chunkier without the wasted mm. corridor space. Um, and I, I would I think it's a much more um, functional ship over form. Yeah. And I think most um, people would agree that that's a better thing in the long run. Like it, it wouldn't matter if she looked like a box as long as she does what she needs to do. Yeah. Um, I, actually, I, I actually preferred... The slimmer look, the long slim look. Visually, it, it, yes. It had a nice look. Uh, I never liked the spindly legs, so I'm glad they're gone. But certainly the long slim look I liked. Mm -hmm. But the stockier, thicker, thicker body, I think, suits what it is. And you don't have those endless corridors to, to mm -hmm. navigate. So I agree with you 100%. Just just touching very quickly on one of the things you mentioned there was the landing gear. I, I think the landing gear, were, how they ended up being is just really, really good. I love how the kind of shields rotate on the side and stuff yeah. like that. They're much better than the initial. That that If you go back and look at one of the initial co concept images, the thing looked like it was up on stilts. It was so high. Um, and, it, and, and that caused problems as well for, for the ramp for the, for the uh, yeah. garage as well. You had a longer ramp at a bigger angle. Lowering, lowering the ship down onto those stocky landing gear also meant the ramp could be at a, a lesser angle, which meant vehicles mm. could get easier. So all around, that was a win-win Yeah, in terms of the landing gear. So Also, as you mentioned, it, the, if you actually look at the original concept, the original ramp is really, 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 really long. <laughs> like, because it's got to go long really <laughs> because of the stilts. Like, it had to be... Yeah. Like, it's literally probably twice as long as it is now. It's, it's crazy. Um so the other thing I want to mention is um, two other small things, like um, small elevators over ladders. Uh, this this ship has two small elevators that we haven't kind of seen. I think the closest we've probably seen is, I know there's some other ships that I'm, the, the names are eluding me um, at the moment, but we have seen a few other small elevators, and I mm. think they're a much better way to go than ladders. And I think very obviously the problem with ladders is how you automatically attach to them. They need to make them so you look at them and activate them like almost everything else in any other yep. video game. It just needs to be done. They just don't seem to want to do it. I don't know why. Um, and then obviously... It, it, can, it certainly was a frustration doing the Retaliator the other day, the other week, going past. And every time I passed it, you know, unless I took a wide berth. Yeah. <laughs> Up the ladder. And, I, uh, I had the same problem with the Starfarer 
that ladder. Yeah, and that's Darfur ladder. Yeah, yeah, I know the one. I always get. <laughs> I have to hug the wall, <laughs> hug the hug the uh, the railing. Mm. But yeah. Um. Um. The other thing I want to mention is the uh, new UI improvements. Um, this is the first ship, obviously, with that coming down the pipeline. Um, and I think that'll carry on to other ships down the way, and I, I really like it. I think everyone can just look at it and go, it's a no-brainer. Um, it's more interactive than Inner Thought, and I think that's the... Like, the Inner, inner Thought system has its place, and I think it's really um, a single-player feature, but I, 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 I think the actual tactile feedback and the ability to actually press buttons is going to be fantastic. And, and that feeds into something that Chris Roberts has always wanted in his games. You know, you go back to Wing Commander and it was always mm. that he wanted to see, you know, as your hand moved the joystick, you wanted to see the character move the joystick. And so I could see that being straight down the line of what Chris Roberts likes in his games, that interactive immersion. Mm. And um, and this this UI does do that. Uh, one other feature you you did forget when we were talking about the rooms was the cartography room. And I, I did. That really... I did, and that really does play into the role of a ship. And at well, the, the moment... We should probably talk about that room and the actual role of this ship then. So, yeah, yeah go ahead. So, this ship is, is a survey ship. That's its key role. And that makes this room really fun really central to what the ship do is doing. It's where you're going to gather your information, be able to see stuff. And it's the only ship we've got with that, app, you know, that complete feature at the moment. Mm. It trumps the 890 jump. In terms of that regard, doesn't matter how good the sensor suite might be on the 89 jump, it doesn't have that cartography room. Um, I don't know any many other ships that have got that. Maybe, maybe you'll find um, the Javelin or the uh, Idris may have something similar. Maybe something but, like the um, uh, the Endeavour with the uh, that big scanner module and that on yeah, it. But again, I would, I would, I would expect the Endeavour to have that. But mm. again, it's that big floating space station. So it's yeah, not it's more of a, a and... sit-in-place ship where this ship mm. actually goes to where it explores. So, yeah. Um, look, yeah, I kind of agree. This uh, the, 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 the little problem with kind of trying to recommend this ship in a way is just we don't have the gameplay yet, and that's mm. my biggest fundamental problem with a lot of these bias guides. Um, we can recommend the ship based on its layout. It's definitely showing a lot of improvements over older ships and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's got all those computers in place, the scanners, the cartography room, all that. All that is very nice, but we just don't have the function, so we can't yeah. really, you know, this, this is a problem with stuff in general. You, 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 uh, people talk about buying a JPEG and buying a concept ship and just hoping it comes to fruition, and you hope that they don't change things on you. Um, yeah, and and sometimes you end up with ships and you just don't use them. Exactly. Um, I don't yeah. think this will be one of them somehow, being one of the most popular no. ships in the game. Uh, if they did that, a lot well, of people. It's not only the most popular ship in game, it also serves the most popular profession in game. So when yes. CIG did that survey way back, way back when, when they said, hey, you know, they were surprised to find that I think it was 60 or 70% of the population about wanted 75, to do exploration. About 75% it was, but yeah. So they wanted to do exploration and they were expecting everyone was pew pew and they, they were surprised by that. Um, mm. And I think that was really what brought about the birth of this as a as a comp ship. Not only that, other other utility based ships we've really seen a turn away from just all combat mm. to to other things and ships that we wouldn't expect, like tug yeah. boats and stuff like that, which is all positive. Um, I I I want to talk about uh, some of the negatives now, and I think the big one for me is the cost of the skin that came out recently. <laughs> um, yes. I yes. It, it basically was just a color palette change, like um. It basically just changed one of the zones on the ship from black to white. Um, it doesn't really have much, and it was really expensive for what it was. Like it was, it was the cost of like a standalone Archimedes it was cost, it, on its it was own. Cost, yeah, it was the cost of an Archimedes or a C eight. Mm. Um, um, yeah, and I, 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 I would have liked to have seen, like, for the price that you paid for that C eight upgrade, uh, I quite honestly think that should have had the skin rolled in with it as well so here you go you get a skin for the character so it matches your c8 um but no you had to buy the c8 upgrade for 22 i think it was 20 dollars yeah um us and i think this was 25 but it, again we, we got a, we got australian pricing so it might have gone up i'm not sure but it, it's akin to 40 to 50 dollars for those two upgrades um which is again <laughs> the price of an aurora and a starter package so it's the price of a game pack mm. the price of a game pack and that's and i that... was I was just yeah. going to add to that. Um, 
I would have liked to have seen a skin for the rover as well, so all three of them had the same um, paint scheme. It could have even been nice if I had, you know, a Carrick uniform, explorers, a proper explorer's uniform, you know, that came with came with that overpriced skin. Yeah, a deep space nine so, five. <laughs> that's right, a deep, a deep space, uh, a deep space. Um, <laughs> Can't call it a Deep Space Nine uniform, a Deep Space Carrick uniform, or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Um, it would have been nice to just see a Deep stuff. Space uniform is what they could have called just, it. Just something, been, yeah. something that made that cost feel less onerous. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah. So the last thing we've got to talk about is obviously the C eight. Um, the C eight Pisces comes with this ship. Um, uh, you can also fit other roundabout. I, I, other ships I, I think it's a runabout i really think that like it's not a snob like they've classed it um because other starters will fit in this ship and we we're talking about like things as crazy as the buccaneer and the arrow will eventually be able to fit in here uh, i they're... think the biggest yeah i think the biggest thing with with the the pisces is the fact that the pisces that comes only has two guns but it still has the cargo space and the passenger mm. component the passenger seats as well it it's not that not as powerful as say an Aurora or a Mustang, but it's as versatile. It can do the same jobs as they yeah. can. In I, terms of a snub ship, the only real snub ship we've got is the P fifty two P seventy two. Yeah. The the eighty five X is is a ship that can quantum and can and can jump as well. So mm. it's comparable in that regard, but this is the only one of those that can actually take cargo and that that sets it apart. Yeah, I think I think it's really important to mention that this is probably the smaller ship that can have another full size ship in it, uh, and, yeah. and that, that that that's another advantage on its own. I don't think though it'll be the type of ship that you'll use, say something like a Polaris. A Polaris can come with arms to bear. This kind of doesn't do that. The main yeah. function of that C eight is basically um, to probably resupply this ship or save fuel when this ship wants to go down a planet. Yeah, to, and to stop that. And I know you were saying that you'd seen videos early on with with um, concept of the of the Pisces where you had a, a scanning suite in the back instead of cargo area. Yeah. And that would be an i that would have been an ideal match for mm -hmm. the Carrick. I agree. Especially with the ability to jump through uh, wormholes as well. Well, um, well, you know, the example I always gave when we talked about the Pisces in the past was like if there's a small wormhole this ship can't go through it. So send the Pisces through, navigate mm -hmm. it, and then you can go sell that information. Um, if a drone can do it, then we're fine. But um, I, I would hope to see down the line that the Pisces has an upgrade. Maybe it's a station that you can just sit and it sits in two of the cargo slots. So maybe it takes yep. up two slots of cargo. Um, so you can choose what you want to do. Um, I, I think most I... people at the end of the day would go, I can take any other starter ship and have the cargo. Or I can take this ship and have the scanner, and I and I think, kind of like when we talked in our last episode about the that you want that rarer thing that another ship doesn't have. Like when I was mentioning mm. stealth over the flying fortress, it's the same thing with this. I, I would rather have a small starter ship that has a scanner than a ship that just does everything that every other ship does. Even if it does better than every other ship, I still rather a ship that's more unique than something that just does it better than someone else. Um, but at the moment. A C eight that only does cargo is more usable than a C eight that's at the moment, yes. Agreed. Because if you've got the C eight that does a scanning suite, what can it do? Tiddly mm. squat. Well, that's the, the Terrapin at the moment. Um, There's another yeah, ship that's, that's exactly the, the same boat. And that doesn't even have cargo. That thing's just an yeah. A to B vehicle at the moment. Um and that kind of comes back to full circle to what we were saying. Well, it's been a bit difficult for us to review some of these ships because really your vanity reviewing them or you're basing them on promise features mm. and it, it just makes it a little difficult for me because i don't want to um promise something for someone and it's not delivered um yeah. and we've and seen that 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 is sometimes the case they're promising things that are not delivered and that's another feature that this ship does have that's uh those antennas for helping it do the jump points and navigate jump points and map yeah. jump points and the only ship we know that's got something similar to that <clears throat> is the uh, Constellation Aquila. Yes. And this does it even better than the Aquila can. But again, there's no jump points to test it on, so that's a promise feature we don't yeah. have. So it's one, another one of those. I think we'll kind of wrap this show up with this algorithm, is that I own one, I know you own one, and I think almost every info runner owns one with the exception of Dyson, if I'm not mistaken. That, yeah, but I own three. Yeah. 
<laughs> we have to get around to doing an our grids episode. We've been trying to figure out how to do our grids fix my fleet. Um, but we don't want to just go, let, here it is. Let, let, let's just say I've got multiple carrots. Yeah, we'll leave it that way. Uh, um, I know everyone's waiting oh, to I see make, it. I make up for a Dyson's uh, failure. Yeah, we'll get around to that real shortly. Um, we're just trying to figure out how to present it in a way that's actually worth watching rather than just five minutes and we're done. So, yeah, we're just figuring that yep. out. Um, is there anything else you want to add on the Karak before we wrap up, Albert? The only thing I could think of is possibly when we get jump points, maybe a C8 variant that does have a scanning suite. A hundred percent. Or, or as I suggested, a module uh, yep. that just works and, in both And that variants. would be... I could see them doing the ship with the, you know, a different C8 with the the, the module actually stuck in it because then they could yep. sell it for more. Yep, another twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> 30, 30 or forty. Yeah. So yeah, and I'll, yeah, and I, I'll, I could I'll, see that. I'll be honest with you. I'd rather the module because then you have both, best of both yeah. words, the cargo if you want it, and you take it out and leave the module in the ship. Yeah. Um, and and so you can go down and get cargo. And let's be honest, for a runabout, that's what you want. You want modularity in a runabout because it needs to be adaptable for the situation. Yeah. All right, but yeah, I do. I do agree. That'd be great. Um, yeah. Do you want to wrap us up then, Algrid, since you yeah, introduced so him? <laughs> this has been the Inver Runners and Al's crazy, or uh, well, Crazy Al's shipyard, reviewing the Carrick. And... It's Colonel now. It's not Crazy Al. It's Colonel Al. <laughs> not Colonel. Crazy Al. Or um, if I was a betting man, <laughs> someone said I was a croupier. Mm -hmm. um, if I was a betting man, I would say that this is a ship worth getting uh, down the line. The problems I have with it at the moment are that it's really over is really expensive. I'm not going to say overpriced, but mm -hmm. it is really expensive. Yeah. And so I think in the current climate, there are better ships you can have that do the job that are in game a lot better than this. Like a, a caterpillar is really good at the moment, as an example. Um, but this is a cool ship, and it's got a lot of future cool gameplay. Mm. Actually, what about that, you? Um, I actually think that's one thing we didn't kind of talk about is the the modules for this ship. I've just realised we didn't talk about that, but um, yeah, that again is two to be determined because they haven't mentioned a lot of that. Um, mm. much like the caterpillar, um, they you know they hinted at them, they showed them off on ATV, and then the the modules didn't, just went the way of the dodo. And I think um, from a marketing perspective, one of the reasons they don't want to talk about those modules is it will affect other sales. Like, well, why would I buy this ship when I can just buy this ship that has all these modules? Yeah. Um, so I think from marketing is kind of hushed them up a bit in that regard. Um, I think it'll come full circle, even if they're just the cargo modules that you can drop off that that's going to be amazing because you can, you know, you can have them interchangeable. So you could leave, you know, drop one off, pick up an empty one, um, so that gives it a little bit like maybe it can do some cargo runs on the side, um, you know, and, and, and that's that's fundamentally what their ship is at the moment is a cargo ship if you're in game with it right now. Um, and I think that's how people will use it initially until, you know, the exploration gameplay actually comes along. So your recommendation? Look, I own one. Um, I'm a sucker. I bought the skin, the C8X upgrade, everything. Um, but, you know... Yeah, but it, you, you just like the red, the red. Windshield. I also got in when the the the, the ship was re relatively cheap. I think I got my yeah. ship for about three hundred and fifty, um, back way back when it came out, and yeah. at that price, it's you know it's a lot more uh, easier pill to swallow. Uh, at that now, price, I think it was actually really good. But yeah, now, at five seventy five, mm, no. Um, you know, and it's much like the Prowler at the moment. I can't look at the Prowler and justify that. Like, I, I, no. I've avoided the Prowler because it's just way too expensive. Um, yeah, and, Australian dollars? <laughs> well, not even to mention that you can probably get two other drop ships that probably don't do exactly what it does. But, you know, you know, when you look at, say, something like the Valkyrie, why, why yeah. would you pick that up when you can do 20 people and, and some vehicles opposed to 20 vehicles? And I know someone's going to turn around the comments and go, but it does this, this, and this better. Yeah, and it does. But is it when you put it against the price, you just yeah, you, you and, just and can't it justify cool. it. It does look cool, but mm. when you're looking at price, it does make you take that. Yeah. Same thing with this ship. Back. This this ship looks great on paper, but I think a lot of people are going to dis be disappointed if they're flying it around in normal space. Like it's either going to have to mm. be in safe space or way out on the fringes. That um, I, like I just don't see this being a pirate ship as an example because it'll just be easy pickings. Yeah, and I don't see it being a ship you'd take into Pirate Swarm and, and expect to win. <laughs> Problem. <laughs> That'd be funny. But, yeah. <laughs> but you get the idea. All right, wrap us up, Algrid. All right, so I've been Al. And I've been, been Execute. Execute. 
We're the Infrarunners, and we're out of here. Take care, God bless, and be well. Bye, guys.